Hey you guys, um, it's me, the Chocolate Lady. Um, I'm going to do my live video a little bit different today. You won't see my face. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, um, today is pajama day at my house. So I am currently in the pajamas that I slept in last night with no makeup on and my hair in a ponytail. So um, I don't particularly love having my picture made or videos made whenever I'm in this particular <laughs> condition. <laughs> Um, but also, I thought it would be great for you all to be able to see the project closer um, so that you can see what I'm working on a little bit better today. Um, this is a better angle for viewing the project. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do today is show you three different projects um, that you can do. With Chalk Couture, we'll do one with our Chalk Couture pastes, which are removable chalk paste. They dry hard and um, won't rub off, but uh, they can be wiped off with water. And, um, Let me mute off. my video here. <sighs> okay, and then um, the other projects I'm going to do are two projects with our inks, which is a smooth... Um, ink color that can be um, washed off if you would like to do it that way. You can use these just like the chalk. Um, they dry hard and so they won't rub off but if you were to say do it on a shirt and not heat set it, when you put it in the washing machine the ink would wash away. So um, the great thing about the inks are that you can actually heat set them and um, they'll be permanent. You can wash them. You can use it on ceramics and glass. Anything that can go in the oven or uh, be heat set with a heat press or a heat gun or um, an iron. And I actually don't have a heat gun or a heat press, so I just use an iron in my oven whenever I'm doing ceramics and glass. So anyway, today I'm going to get started here with my shirt. This is a shirt that I bought at a craft store. Um, there's nothing fancy about it. I haven't even washed it yet. I literally just took the sticker off this morning. Um, so uh, this is, that's why it's all wrinkly and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, so this is, all good things are wild and free. This is one of my favorite cute little transfers that we sell. And I've mixed it with a feather transfer, which unfortunately is retired, but I thought it would make a good companion to this. I also considered doing flowers. We have some wreaths. Um, one that I haven't purchased yet is our, um, um, I think it's called our boho wreath or our um, something like that anyway. And it's like wildflowers in a wreath. It's really pretty. Um, so today, for this one, I'm going to be using our gold couture ink. It's actually shimmery because, you know, who doesn't love a little shimmer on your shirts? So to get started today, we're going to go ahead and do this first. And I'm doing everything in gold today. So... Just get my gold ink out here and you guys can take a look at this. It's really, really smooth and a little bit runny. You can see it's already starting to run to the edge just a little bit there. Um, this You don't have to add water to this unless it just somehow got dried out really bad and got super thick. Then you would add just a little bit of water and you would mix it up. Um, I recommend you use a squirt bottle to add water to your paste and your inks if you're going to do it so you can just get a little bit at a time. Um, the other day I was doing something with a friend. And I was just using water out of the sink and I had these tiny little vials that I mix colors in when I want to do a special color. And I put way too much water in it and then it was just runny and it wasn't easy to work with anymore. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to use my bigger squeegee here. This is the angled squeegee. Um, we are currently out of stock on squeegees online. So if you want to place an order, um, once I see your order go through, or you can message me beforehand, and I can order it for you and send it to you, and I will include either, I only have a couple left of squeegees on hand, the small squeegees, which would be this one prior to being cut apart, is the, what the small squeegee would look like. Um, I can send you one of these if I have enough left. I don't have very many though. Or I could send you something that would work until we get squeegees in stock and then I could send you an actual um, squeegee like this. And we're out of the angled squeegees too right now. Um, our company just blew up pretty quick and um, we ran out of some stuff, which is like a pain, but also a really good sign that the business is doing well and it's got, we sell quality products. 
So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. What I've done here is I've put some gold ink, kind of a chunky amount, on my squeegee. And I'm literally just going to smooth it in here. You can see that it's getting inside of the silk screen, which is the area where you can read the wording and stuff. And it doesn't matter if I get too much. You scrape the extra off before you're done. And since this is the ink, it dries a lot slower than um, the paste do. So you don't have to rush as quickly. If you're doing a lot of colors in one project, you can kind of take your time to make sure that it gets in all the silk screen. Um, so I'm just going to finish up the letter up here. And I prepped all this today so we could move this along a little bit faster. And if you're curious about like what all this is and how it all works all together, you can uh, look through my other videos on this page um, or you can wait just a, like a week or two and I'm going to be putting together some care and use tut tutorial videos. Um, so that's all I've done here. I've smeared this on, covered all the silk screen, and wiped the extra off. And I'm literally just going to smear off some of the extra on here and then get a little bit more for my feather. Um, I say a little bit more, I got a lot more. But like I said, it's okay. Now you do want to be careful on a shirt like this that you don't get off of your silk screen. Now if I did that, all of this and I said, golly, I just don't like the way that looks at all. I would just throw this thing in the washing machine, whether it was dry or not, and wash it and the ink would wash off. No problem. Because until this is set with an iron, or um, a heat press or whatever it is that you have at your home it's not permanent this stuff's so fun to use okay so that's it for that I'm actually gonna um, clean this off and put it upside down on the other side um, before I even pull this actually because the inks don't dry as quickly I can leave that on there for a few minutes and it won't mess it up so there's my feather. Oh, that's so cute. I'm actually just going to put this in some water real quick here. I have a pan of water off to the side to lay my transfers in as soon as I finish with them. I'm wiping off the extra uh, ink that's on the transfer right now with just my fingers in the water. Now I'm going to lay it on a towel and use a dry paper towel to wipe any extra ink off and to get the extra moisture off so I can lay it back down on the other side. Our transfers have um, adhesive on the back that is reusable. Um, so I can just lay this back down the other side. It'll stick down on there just like it did on that side. And will work exactly the same way. I'm just gonna get a little bit of the extra. Oh no, I got some water on there. I think it'll be fine. Um, I also forgot to tell you guys, I have a mat underneath my shirt layer um, between the two layers here. And the reason I've done that is to make sure, oh, well, my goodness, I'll have to use some water to wipe that off. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, um, just to make sure that this doesn't bleed through onto the other side of my shirt and make the design on the other side, it wouldn't look near as nice, trust me. So like I said, this will just wipe off with some water and it won't be any big deal. Until I heat set it, it's not permanent, so it won't be an issue at all. So I'm going to lay this back down here pretty close to the way I had it on the other side and that's also why I wanted to leave this on here so that I could get it lined up the right way. I'm just going to press this around the design to make sure that it's adhered nicely so there's no bleeding underneath the transfer design and I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did on the other side, get a glob of paint or ink sorry, on my squeegee and wipe it across here, making sure I cover the whole deal, but try my best not to get off of the transfer onto the shirt so I don't have to clean up like I do right here. And y'all, I'm a messy crafter, so it's not a surprise that I smeared it off on there because I get in a hurry and I don't notice stuff like that I was laying the shirt down on the ink. <laughs> this is a very forgivable craft, <laughs> thank goodness. And the fact that you can reuse these over and over again is really cool. So like I said, if I decide I just really don't like this design, I'll just wash the shirt and I can reuse these transfers in a different way on here or switch it up completely if I decide to. So here's the other feather. 
Now I'm laying my transfer in my water over here. Now I'm going to pull this one and also put it in my water. And that's what my shirt looks like. Um, we, uh, I've made several shirts. I'm having a lot of fun with this ink here. And since I'm talking to you guys about this, I'll just show you how easy it is to wipe this off. Uh, Chalk Couture sells the transfers here, but we also sell um, the mats. This is a mat that I bought at like Ikea, I think, in a two-pack. Um, it's just a cutting mat that you use in your kitchen. Um, the ones that Chalk Couture sells are much better. They're kind of sticky a little bit, so um, whenever I was pulling that stencil up and the shirt was pulling with it and stuff, and it kind of shifts around on the mat a little bit when I'm working with it. If you were using a Chalk Couture ink mat, it wouldn't do that. Um, they're definitely a better quality. I just haven't invested in one yet. Probably should. I make enough shirts and projects that it would um, be beneficial to me, I do believe. So anyway, I'll wipe that off a little bit better here in a little bit when I'm not on camera. But this is the shirt that I finished. I'm done with it. As soon as I get that cleaned up, I can heat set it. And what I would do is, I have parchment paper right here. I would lay this over top of the top of the design and I would put a second piece underneath the design and of course remove my mat. And then I would iron the top part for four minutes and then I would flip it inside out, lay these back under and over it, and then do the underside for another four minutes and then the shirt is totally done. You want me to say squeegee again? You like that? Uh, I just bought this transfer too, so I was excited to use it for something. I've had these shirts laying around. got them on sale um, at the craft store. They do deals all the time on shirts. If you just look out for them, you can find them super cheap. I'm pretty sure I paid $2 for that shirt. Maybe even less because they had a deal and then I had taken an additional 20% off, so I may have paid even less than that. Um, okay, the next thing I'm going to show you real quick here is another... I'm going to do another ink project real quick. Now this one is just a little cosmetic bag, and um, this is another transfer that is retired, but I'm pretty sure they will be coming out with another one similar to this. I know that this was a super popular design uh, with the lips and all this stuff. It's got like a lip gloss tube and um, other little stuff like that and has words like hello gorgeous and hello beautiful and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show you how you could use it. This is just a designed cosmetic bag here. I put a piece of parchment paper inside of it for the same reason as the other so that I don't um, bleed the color through and to the other side. Um, and I'm going to use the gold again. And I'm going to go ahead and continue to use the same squeegee that I was using. Uh, and then I'm going to do red ink on the lips. And one of the things, like I said about this, is you want to make sure that this is adhered well. This has a lot of texture to it simply because of the seams. Um, that are on this and so I wanted to make sure that this is pressed down good especially right here in the corners where the seams are a little heavier um, to make sure that my design doesn't bleed and like I said if it does and I don't like it I'll throw it in the washing machine clean it up and then I'll try it again in a different way some other time um, so I'm going to do gold for hello beautiful and red for the lips I'm going to use my squeegee you like that Jen <laughs> And I just want to make sure that this gets all into the silk screen. Um, but be careful not to get it off of the edge if I can help it. Having a little bit of trouble right here because there's a seam there. So it's not going on quite as smoothly. And you can kind of still see the pattern through the gold. So if I were to do this and think that maybe the gold wasn't thick enough, I would let it dry all the way and then um, I would go back, lay the transfer back down after it's dry. Ooh, that was a close one. You guys see that? Um, lay the transfer down after it's dry and put a second coat of the ink on there. And the ink does take a while to dry. I would say I let mine dry for several hours just to be safe. Um, I don't want to throw my iron down on it if it's not dry and it like smear or not um, seal the way that it's supposed to so I'd rather just wait I just um, plan ahead a little bit whenever I'm using the ink projects 
and know that say I'm doing this now it'll probably be after dinner this evening with my family around 7 or so when I actually sit down to um, iron this out and that might be an excess of time to do it but I'd rather be safe than sorry and then have to redo the whole project again okay I got it all on there now I'm just going to scrape the extra off um, so I don't waste it. It's very precious. I want to make sure that I'm not wasting my inks and my paste. Not that it costs a lot of money to repurchase, but why waste it when you don't have to? You can use such a small amount. These things can last a really long time. Okay, that one looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and peel this before I do the other color. And I'm done with my gold for today, so I'm just going to close the container and put my squeegee in some water to be cleaned off later. Um, that way I don't accidentally get gold or red on something else. Plus, I'm really curious to see what this looks like. Hmm. I can already see that right there, I'll use my smaller squeegee, it didn't go through the silk screen very well right there. As soon as I started to peel that, I could see that. So I'm going to smooth this down before I even do anything else. I'm going to smooth this down on here really well and try that little part again. I just didn't get enough of the ink on that part, and that's why it did that. Um, it doesn't dry that quickly, so it wouldn't be because it's already dry. If you're using the chalk um, and that happens, it can mean that it dried on your screen instead of on your project and then it pulled up because of that. Alright. Now I'm going to put the lid on my gold and pull this transfer. And you always want to pull left to right or top to bottom and not diagonally. It can stretch your transfer and then mess up your finished project later on. There we go. That worked out perfectly. I'm going to grab this from the bottom here. A little harder when you're working with fabric that gives and doesn't stay put. I'm going to have to peel it up along the edges. Oh, it looks like I did the same thing over on this side. So, same deal. I'm going to bust this back out and fix it real quick. If I wanted to, I could try to wait until this is sealed down um, complete, I mean, like dry completely before I tried to do this again. Um, but I don't feel like that's necessary right now. I was scared to use too much around the edges and I used too small of an amount. Alright, here we go. Awesome. There we go. Looks like it got a little light right here on the L, but like I said, I can fix that a little later or what I do sometimes is I use a little paintbrush and I just fix the little spots like a touch up. So there's that. Let me go ahead and do the red here and we can see what these lips look like. This transfer is super cute. Um, I love working with these little lips. I'm going to push this down a little bit more right here. I'm afraid it's not sealed very well on that seam. Be careful not to touch my gold. Now I'm just going to smear this in here. And one of the things I've noticed too, um, some fabrics will soak the ink up a little bit better than others. So some of them I think just need to be gone over twice anyway to get like a solid color. Um, and I might not wipe a ton of this off simply because I want it to be pretty solid and also because of the seam there, it's going to be a little hard to do. I just want to make sure I don't have any lines, uh, like paint lines, in my design. And I'm going to peel this up right away too so I don't stick my fingers in it. Let's smear just a little. Still looks cute though. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with what you guys are saying. But here we go. Let's smear this on. Hey, Jessica, I didn't see that you joined us. 
If you want to try this at your house, Jessica, my mom's got some couture stuff, chalk couture stuff that she'd probably let you play with a little bit. I don't know that she's used it much. My dad and her had been traveling quite a bit with their camper, the retired life. All right, there's that one. Go ahead and peel this one up here. Now, like I said, this would be the same thing. Oh, that one's smeared too. But I'm getting some good lip shapes, even if I'm not getting the details on the lips. Um, and I still think it looks really cute. These small ones are going to be hard. Plus, this fabric is a little more textured than, say, like a cotton fabric would be. Um, but anyway, so this is what this one looks like. And I would still do the same thing. I would iron both sides with parchment paper on top and underneath for four minutes. Um, I know some people, when they're using um, stuff with material that may be polyester that might melt if it gets too hot, I've heard that they will actually just do like 20 or 30 seconds, even up to a minute on one side, then flip it, then do the other side for a minute, and just kind of go back and forth until they've got it sealed down completely. Because once it's cooled down after you heat it, I mean, it's good to go after that. Um, so those were our two ink projects for the day. The very last thing I'm going to show you today is a reverse canvas. Now, this is a blank canvas that I bought at the craft store in a multi-pack. Um, and the reverse canvas process is you literally reverse the canvas. So I've done most of this already. Peeled the staples out. Some people cut them and leave the staples in there that were in there and don't worry about it. Um, I don't like to do that because I want the back of my reverse canvas to be a really nice clean edge. I'm not going to staple it in front of you guys. My son is napping and I'm not going to use the staple gun um, in this room. <laughs> He's right upstairs. Um, I do that in my basement uh, where I can't wake anybody up or really bother anybody. But anyway, so I have a pair of pliers and a screwdriver and I know this is not technically what the screwdriver is for, and I know some tool people would be rolling over um, if they saw me doing this, but I literally just pull the staples up and throw them away. I already loosened these. And for ones like this that are still buried in here, I dig this in a little bit just to get underneath the edge of it. And once I get it popped up enough, I can use my pliers to grab a hold of it and pull it out. Um, I have a staple puller, but it's for paper, and it does not work on the wooden canvas at all. Maybe I just need a heavier duty run, or maybe they sell one that I just don't know about. So you literally take your canvas right off of your frame, and who knew this is what the frame looks like underneath. Um, I just learned about this when I started doing chalk couture, um, and I wish I had known about it sooner because it's really cool. I like the rustic look of the frame. I'm actually going to leave this one raw. I'm not going to stain it or do anything with it. It's got the staples in the corner. It's kind of rough wood. If I wanted to, I could sand this down. I could paint it. Um, I could try to pull the staples and I could do something on the back to make it stay if I wanted to do that. So because I want my edge on my finished project to be super clean, what I do is I cut the canvas just to the inside of the staple lines all the way around like right in between that fold and the staple I cut the whole thing out all the way around those are stuck together here we go now it'll cut super easy doesn't have to be a completely straight line but it does help if it's semi straight because what I'm going to do in the end here, um, having that line be sort of straight kind of helps with the finished look a little bit. So I do the same thing all the way around. I'm going to cut this out. Having these fold lines on here are actually helpful with the finished project as well. Um, one of the things you got to be careful of when you're doing a reverse canvas is that you keep your design in the right place on the canvas. I've seen some people do the canvases uh, this way and they just didn't notice, I guess when they were doing their design, that the design was going to be covered a little bit by the frame when it's done. So the reason this is called reverse canvas is this. When you are done, you will be putting the frame on top of the canvas and stapling the canvas back 
onto the back side of this. So when it's finished, all the edges are clean and you have a completely clean finished project that's already framed and ready to be hung on the wall. Um, here is a reverse canvas that I've done previously um, that I really, really like. This is my favorite transfer that we have right now. Um, I actually have an extra one on hand, so if somebody is looking for that, I could seriously get it out to you as soon as tomorrow if it's something that you would like to have. Um, just message me. But here's what the back looks like once it's stapled together. Um, I'm a very messy crafter, but I'm also like this weird combination of um, obsessive compulsive about getting things just right. So you can see my edges are very straight. I took the canvas, I folded it under just enough so it would staple down, but not enough so it would stick out on the other side of the frame. And I like stapled here and here and here. Then I stretched this across and stapled directly across from each of those so that it wouldn't have any wrinkles or anything in it. Um, that's kind of an upholstery trick to kind of go side to side and top to bottom so that you stretch it tight and you don't get weird wrinkles in your upholstery. Same process applies for the reverse canvas. So anyway, the project I'm going to do today, and like I said, you want these lines in here because this helps you square up your design. This is the design that I'm going to be putting on this one. And I want to make sure that I get it equal distant from this fold on both sides and from here to here. That way it's guaranteed to show up in the center of my project. So if I were to just lay this down here real quick, you can see it's kind of tight around the edges. It'd be easy to get it off to the side, especially if I were going to add some little details to this. Um, it would be very easy to lose some of the design under the frame. So this one here, I'm just going to square this up and I'm going to lay this transfer down. I will not fuzz this transfer. It's been used several times already and I'm using it on canvas. I want it to be sticky so I don't get a bleed underneath of my design. So sometimes this is just a guesswork, but those lines on the canvas will really, really help me make sure that this is squared up um, better. And with these types of transfers, I like to start at one side and then kind of roll it down. Ooh, I didn't do bad at all. Looks like I'm a little off. So I will square it up here. Great thing about this, reusable adhesive. So I can just lay it down this way. And I'm just smoothing it as I go so I don't have a bunch of bubbles and wrinkles in my transfer. And with this one, I'm going to get my fingers a little messy today. I want to do an ombre with this. I was trying to think of what colors would be a cool ombre. Because um, not all colors blend well together. Um, keep that in mind if you're going to try this. Um, so I wouldn't want to do like, I don't know, a blue with a yellow and a red necessarily. I don't. It might not blend well. You'd have to do it just right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the school bus yellow and the red. I'm going to do a school bus yellow up here, red down here, and I'm going to do like a blend of them on these letters here. So we'll see how this goes. But because I'm working with um, the paste, it dries a little faster. So I'm going to have to work a little faster um, than I do whenever I'm using. And I have to clean my squeegees off in between using it. Actually, I think I'm going to use my angled squeegee. This one's so versatile because it has so many different sides on it um, that are different widths. So it makes it so much easier to use, especially if you're working on a bigger project like this. I use this one almost solely on that bushel and a peck one that I just showed you, simply because um, most of those letters are really big and I was only using the red in some small places. So I used my cut piece of squeegee for the red and for the black I used my angled squeegee. So these are our two ounce containers. You will probably not find any of these online. These come with your starter kit, this size does, um, not this color, but they started switching from the two ounce paste sizes to the three ounce paste sizes right after I started with this company. Um, so these are so much better. 
the opening is wider, it's easier to get the color out as opposed to these when you're using this, you kind of have to come in a little weird. So let's get started with this one here. This one's probably thick, it's not a color I use a ton. Um, I have some little stirs here. I'm gonna give this a stir. Yeah, it's thicker than I would like for it to be. So this is where your spray bottle comes in handy. I'm not gonna spray over my project, I don't wanna get it wet, I've done that before. I just, one little squirt in here, give it a mix and see how that looks. Um, you want it a little runnier than yogurt. Um, you can use it thicker if you want to, however, about like that is good. Um, however, if it's thicker, it dries faster and you don't have much time to work on your project. So before I even use that, I'm going to go ahead and make sure the red is the right consistency. Um, and the little stirs that I'm using are plastic. These are actually cake pop sticks I had laying around in my kitchen. They say that you should not, this is also too thick, I can already tell. Um, they say that you should not use wood stirs because it can absorb some of the moisture out of your paste and um, dry it out faster. You don't want that to happen. So you can get any little plastic thing. Some people said that they bought those little sample spoons that you get at um, like ice cream places and they use those to stir with. Uh, whatever works for you. Alrighty, so yellow, blend, blend, red. So let's go. And I'm gonna say, I'm not super experienced with the ombre stuff. I've done it a couple times, it turned out pretty good. I don't know if it was luck or if I just knew what I was doing. We'll say I knew what I was doing. So I'm just gonna smear this on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and swipe some of this yellow right across the top of this next line of letters. Cause I'm gonna blend that in anyway. This angle squeegee makes it so much easier to apply this. If I were using that small squeegee, it would take me a lot longer to do this part. And once again, I'm trying not to get it off the side, but if I do, it's not a huge deal. I just laid my knuckle in it. Okay, I'm gonna leave that like that for right now. Cause I don't want it to dry. And the thicker it is on there, the less likely it's gonna dry. I'm just rinsing my squeegee off real quick in some water and using a paper towel to clean off the extra paste so I don't blend the red and yellow before I'm ready to. All right, here goes the red. And it's thick, I'm doing it thick on purpose. Gives me more time to work this project the way that I want it to. And the same deal with this, I'm gonna come up on this letter a little bit here, just like this. All right, now I'm gonna do some red here. Get all the red on here that I want. It does not have to be perfect in the least. You're blending the colors here. I'm gonna wipe this off and grab my yellow and smear some of that on there and then I'm gonna use my finger to blend them together. I'm uh, running out of clean paper towels here. I set some out beforehand so this wouldn't happen, but I'm messy, like I said. I use more paper towels and cleaning wipes than I probably need to, but whatever. It's my project, I can do it how I want to. So I'm gonna throw this yellow down on here. Oh, goodness. Well, that'll wipe off. Now I'm gonna use my finger to blend this in. It's okay if it's splotchy, it's okay. I mean, this can look however I want it to look. Bring a little more red in here. Ooh, that's gonna look really cool, I think. Now I'll grab my squeegee back out and smear the extra off of there. Now I'm wiping this on a paper towel. I'm not trying to save this blended color here. I don't have any desire to keep that shade. I do sometimes keep the shades. I'll just mix it in a little, um, sample container. 
Speaking of samples, I'm going to be making some samples um, to mail out to people. So if I will post that on my page, if it's something that you are interested in, let me know. Um, all I ask is that you pay the $3 shipping to get it to your house. Um, everything else is on me. And I'm going to pull another paper towel here. I need to move along a little faster. My stuff's starting to dry. Um, just trying to be careful not to blend my colors on my project in the red and the yellow, at least not a ton. There we go. Now I'm going to pull it. Let's see how cool it turned out. i got to be careful though. I have paste on my fingers. Alright. Alrighty. I think it looks pretty neat. Stick this in my water here. Wipe my fingers off so I don't get it on anything else. And like I said, I come back in here with um, a paper towel and wipe off the extra paste that I got on there. And then, um, and if I were to get this on my clothes, this is the same deal. If I had this on my clothes, I'm trying to be careful not to get any extra on here, um, then I would just wipe it or wash my clothes and it wouldn't matter. I'm using this on my dining room table, which is like my nice table in my house. And it makes no difference. I don't put anything down underneath because I'm not going to ruin my table with the inks or with the paste. Um, it'll just wash right off. See, this is coming right off. It's not a really big deal on the edge here except for my OCD doesn't want that to show on the back side. <laughs> like anybody's going to notice it. Um, so anyway, this is what you do. You clean up your mess a little bit here. Um, I'm well versed in cleaning off the extra chalk and ink because that's my deal. If it doesn't come off all the way, that's not a huge deal either. Um, you can always work it into your design, like add some dots or some stars or a little uh, border shape. They have several different border stuff on different transfers that you can use. Um, you can see my water's a little bit colored because of my transfers that I've been laying in there. So anyway, that's the gist of it there. And here's what it will look like once I get my um, frame laid down on that. I think that looks really cute with the raw wood frame. And um, that's about it. So if you guys are interested in purchasing any transfers or like I said, in a sample kit, I'm going to be posting a picture of the sample kits um, probably later today. It's just a little chalk chip and a little uh, cut apart heart piece. You can buy the cut apart hearts in a set of six. I've cut them apart so that I can add them to the sample kit. And you'll get a tiny little vial like this with a paste color in it. You can tell me whether you want white or black. Those are the only two um, options that I will offer for the sample kits. Um, and then you'll get a little squeegee piece that is a little bit smaller than this. So you'll get these plus a card that tells you how to um, use and care for your transfer um, and one of my business cards. So if you are interested in that, be looking out for the um, post on that later on today. And I really appreciate everybody joining me and I hope you all have a really great day.